Orchid Chores Diary. Oh boy, do we have work to do. Now, this is not an orchid, but there's a beautiful Chao Praia in bloom in the background. <laughs> but it does affect my orchids. This is a bush, a shrub called Dama de Noche. Beautiful, beautiful fragrance at night. But, oh my word, is it a threat. Because in the last couple of days, I have noticed an infestation of horrible beasties that could pose a threat to the orchids that are over here to the right. And I have to tell you that I'm going to have to trim that bush down with as little movement as possible because there's a lot of them in there and it's just gonna give me the itchies. But what we're going to do is fix this shrub if you would like to join me. Oh, hey, <laughs> it's good to have you here. Thank you in advance for keeping me focused. Gonna be trimming this shrub and then I have to show you some things with regards to some super top guns that we haven't seen for a long time. I'd like to update you on those. And I'm gonna be showing you with some slides all the blooms that I have currently in the blooming alley, which are pretty much the same, but one very special one. I'll show you a picture of it now. It is my Brassavola flagellaris. Okay, that bloom has been open quite some time, but I've got a second bud forming and that is a first. First time to get two blooms. I feel quite an achievement coming up. All right, let me get you in position. I need to deal with this. You can see the breeze is picking up and what I'm going to be doing is I really should just bag the whole shrub, but I can't. It's not mine. I'm just going to deal with what's on my side. So let's get this out of the way and hopefully I get a little bit of peace of mind back. Ooh, gross. Not looking forward to this at all. I spent a couple of days just clipping out the lower branches thinking that was going to be enough, but it, it's not. I, I really have to go in and, and really strip the whole thing. I mean, I love Dama de Noche. This is sad for me to do because I love the fragrance while we still have some warm-ish nights. But yeah, I don't want to have to worry constantly. Ugh, so disgusting. And I'm starting from the bottom, I'm working my way up. Let me show you the bud of Mr. Mailman. I lost one. I think the filming did one bud in. I had bud blast from that one. But uh, we still have one bud that's looking pretty good. That was the smaller of the two. At least one is still holding up. There may be a mailman bloom coming. I'm not going to count my chickens before they are hatched, but there may be. Oh, that would be awesome. Ooh, I'm underneath it now. Go. Oh, don't want to reach over there. Little black things. And they've also decimated the blooms under here because they are here by their millions. Oof. Okay. And then I have the privilege of carrying them out. Carrying the branches out, I mean. <laughs> Not the individual bodies, but the whole branches out to the dumpster. Oh, King, that was close. Eh, grossness. Something just fell on my head. <laughs> I'm going to need a nice long shower after this. Look, I am... So not bothered by bugs, honestly. Don't care. Don't like them. Don't want them in my house. But yeah, no, I, I'm i not fussy about bugs. But this is a different animal. When there's, when there's so many, mm, that's when I'm like, okay, you win. I'm out. <laughs> Just going to finish this off. All right, 
from all the affected branches that I could see, I've taken them all down. It's gonna take me a little while now to clear this space. And then I have to spray it down with water just to make sure that these guys aren't flying everywhere. And I feel as though I'm itching myself everywhere. <laughs> but at least it's not a windy day. It had to be done. I'll be right back. absolutely love the way this is looking and I wonder how long this is going to last. <laughs> oh goodness me, while it's still a little bit warm, while the terracotta is still radiating heat, I got that all nicely cleaned off and washed and I know that the humidity levels are up to 85-90% in the corner right now. Oh, the Angraecums are enjoying this so so much and the light for the Phalaenopsis just a moment to take a breath and take it all in and enjoy it. Take a snapshot, a mental snapshot to draw on when later on it is dark, cold and nasty and they are cooped up inside. Just absorb, absorb. We are now with the super duper top guns. This is CG Roebling and I pulled also the Guatemalensis and my Cattleya Maxima because they all live together on the bottom shelf of the blooming alley whether they're in bloom or not and I've been doing some pest treatment on them and yesterday I started the process because they were showing signs of scale and here we can see the bodies which I hope are bodies. Yep I went in there with a toothbrush doused in alcohol, something similar to this. It doesn't matter, I can repeat it. No harm, no foul. I usually use a paintbrush, but because these structures have some ridges in them, they're quite large, I can get a toothbrush in there. The paintbrush is also just handy because it coats everything nicely, whereas a toothbrush would leave like gaps, you know? And here I don't have to worry about tight spaces so much. I've flushed them and given them some more calcium and magnesium, all of them. And we'll have a look at the three that we haven't seen all season, except, you know, in fleeting glimpses <laughs> when I was showing the blooms of the blooming alley. But let's have a look and see how my CG Roebling developed over the season. She is pretty, pretty big, but is growing well, staying nicely within the parameter of her pot. These are the two growths that I was concerned about. Here's the one single new growth of the season. This growth did not produce anything. I'm hoping to get this sheath to bloom, but that would mean, wow, get those buds to form and everything and bloom by mid-October. In spring, I had deformed blooms due to the lack of light that all the orchids I'm updating on now had based on winter, spring, horrible, horrible conditions. So I got deformed blooms out of that and I really actually want to see how the next blooming is because she's had all the light throughout the rest of the summer. You can see the scale damage right here. I wasn't paying close enough attention but we're okay. Just some visual reminders to be more cautious next time. And here's my Guatemalensis. 
wow, she is the biggest orchid I have in a pot. Of course, I've got others that are bigger, but you know, they are on mounts and they live outside, but she's the biggest one I have. Her new growths of the season are this one, sorry for that jiggle, and this one right here. And unfortunately, can you see, I hope you can see in there is a sheath, but it is brown because my priority was to have her in the rain and forget whatever is happening in the growth there. I just wanted them to get some warm rain. I took the risk. I honestly thought I had plenty of breeze. I would not have expected that sheath to go brown. This orchid will bloom from a sheath within a sheath, so there's still hope. We'll just have to wait and see. One sheath came out really, really well. This growth may have been a little bit too closed yet when I left her out in the rain, but she has absolutely no scale. And I'm loving the fact that the two new growths also grew nicely back into the pot. Now the next season, we'll just have to wait and see what side from these two growths is she gonna bring out another growth and then we'll have to make a decision whether she can stay in the pot or what is going to happen. Whether a repot is going to be necessary somewhere down the line in 2023. Living next to the CG Roebling, no scale at all. An orchid that did pick up some scale is my Cattleya Maximum and they were hiding in the old flower spike right here which had a sheath around it, but they're all dead now. These orchids, like I said, have been treated several times over the course of the past two or three days. I've been meaning to do this video for quite some time. I kept having to be distracted by things that life throws at you. But Maxima's doing fine. I also removed some old pseudobulbs in the back just to tidy up and avoid any more kind of, you know, hosting areas for scale. I'm pretty much starting my fall prep with regards to what I do to my orchids before they are ready to come inside, which is a complete once over and it takes hours. Even I extend it to days because if I do find a pest, I wanna make sure that I'm on top of it repeatedly before I'm comfortable bringing them in. But I'm going to do a whole video about my fall prep and you'll see the process within maybe 15 minutes as opposed to the 24 hours it normally takes me to qualify an orchid as ready to go indoors. Right, the beauty of the Maxima is that she is already starting another new growth down here. That's getting light training. Love this orchid and how it grows into the pot. And then maybe you've already seen this. One sheath and the buds are already showing. And the second sheath right here is cracking open, just cracked today. So these are they. I've got XXL, XL, and well, my Maxima isn't exactly XL, so we'll call her large in the grouping of three. I really want to get them back into their shelf now though, so I'm going to do that, and then let's have a look-see how everything has fallen back into place. After a couple of days of maneuvering, having to be very careful with the Dawiana, the Coilostylus, and my gorgeous golden peacock at least, the status quo is re-established because also for the Maxima, I didn't want her out on the staging area for that long. Having to move her back into her place for another couple of weeks, I would love for those buds to bloom out and not blast because of moving at too late a stage. I think we caught it just in time. I just got to make sure that I keep an eye on the CG Roebling. It bugs me a little bit that I thought I could see everything I needed to see close up, but clearly, yeah. And while moving them back into their place, I listened back to some of my clips and again, there is static in there. If because it coincides with me saying a word and happens at the same time, I can't edit that out. And for that reason, I want to say I'm very, very sorry if that is annoying to you as well as it is to me. I do apologize, but I thank you so very much for watching, spending time with me, keeping me focused. I hope you enjoyed the video. Personally, I feel a lot better that those branches have gone, lightened the canopy a little bit. I'm sure there's enough Dama de Noche fragrance to go around for another couple of weeks, no matter that I took off 50% of the shrub. <laughs> I feel so much better. Now I'm going to be going around the orchids one more time, watering them again 
all those that need it, making sure that the leaves aren't heating up. Because at the speed at which this angle of the sun thing is happening, it's pretty fast now and new leaves are getting exposed. So I'm doing my afternoon rounds after I say goodbye to you. Thank you so very much for watching. Your time is appreciated, as is your support. Have yourself a beautiful day on that one condition, though, that you please stay safe. Take care. Bye.